Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk through the practice problems on page 14. And what we're doing here is we are applying the patterns that we noticed on pages 12 and 13. And there's another video talking through those patterns. But what we're looking at here is the arrangement of electrons. So where are the electrons um, in the atom? And it turns out that these electrons can be found in shells. So shells are these, you know, locations of electrons. That's where the electrons kind of live. They live in these shells that's outside of the nucleus. So our structure here of the atom is that we have uh, the nucleus here in the middle, and that is where the protons and neutrons are. But today we're not going to focus on the protons and neutrons. We're going to focus on the electrons that exist outside of the nucleus. And we sometimes describe the location of these electrons as being in these shells. So they can only exist in these certain locations. And each electron shell can hold a different number of electrons. And the properties of an atom will depend a lot on how many electrons are in its outermost shell, which is called the valence shell. So the valence shell is the um, shell that is furthest away from the nucleus. And some patterns that we noticed um, in the, on pages 12 and 13 involving the periodic table are this. Well, one is that we notice that the row number um, is going to be tell us how many shells are in an atom. So when you're doing some practice problems like this, I recommend um, copying over your favorite, you know, periodic table and then actually numbering it. So I'm going to number this one through seven. So it looks like francium here on this bottom row, it's going to have seven shells. Um, potassium right here will have four shells. So everything in this row going across is going to have that many electron shells. And then there's a pattern when we look at the columns here. If we number the columns from left to right and we skip the transition metals, we skip these ones here in the middle. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then the column number um, tells us the number of valence electrons in that atom. So what we can do is we can use the location on the periodic table to figure out how many shells that um, an atom will have and how many valence electrons it will have. So those are kind of the main two patterns we're going to focus on here. So let's first look at the element SE. Um, it is element number 34. It is down right here and the name of it is selenium. And you don't have to memorize the name, but we do want you to get familiar with them. So you can just kind of look it up here. And from its location on the periodic table, we'll, we should be able to figure out how many valence electrons it has and how many shells it has. So selenium is in row four, which means it has four shells. So the number of shells corresponds to the row number. And then the column tells us the valence electrons. So the selenium over here is in column six. So that means it has six um, valence electrons. And the way that you find the core electrons, let me erase this so I have room to write. Um, all of the electrons that are not valence are what we call core electrons. So the valence electrons are on the outside, core electrons are on the inside. So the way that you find the core electrons is you take the total minus the valence. That will give you the core. So this is going to be 34 minus 6. So I have 28 core electrons. So again, the way I find these pieces of information, the number of valence electrons you get from the um, column number, so like what column is it in, the number of shells you get from the row number, the number of electrons we find from looking at the atomic number, 
because the atomic number tells us the protons. And for all of these elements, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Um, and yeah, so then let's look at this last column, finding an element with similar chemistry. So what does that mean? Well, you might remember when we talked about the periodic table that substances in the same column have similar properties. Like, for example, everyone in column one over here, we called this group the alkali metals, and they all reacted very strongly with water. And so things that are in the same column are going to have similar um, reactivity. And so if I'm looking for something that's going to behave similarly to selenium, I'm going to go over here and find where selenium is. And I'm going to pick something that's either like above or below it. So maybe like sulfur or tellurium or oxygen. You just want to pick something that's in the same column. Um, yeah. So let's do another one here. So germanium. Um, if I'm having a hard time finding germanium, I have a hint here. It's in row four. It's got four shells. So let's find it. Oh, it's actually right here. Pretty close to selenium. So there's germanium. Its symbol is GE. And its atomic number, if you zoom in and look at it, its atomic number is 32, which means it has 32 electrons total. 32 total electrons. And then the column it's in tells us how many valence electrons it has. So germanium is in column four. So it's going to have four valence electrons. And the number of core electrons would be 32 minus four. It is 28. You'll actually notice things that are in the same row um, will mostly have the same number of core electrons. So you might notice that just there. That's kind of cool. And then if you're picking an element with similar chemistry, again, I'm going to pick something that's in the same column. So maybe like silicon would be a good one to pick. That's right above it. Um, or tin. So I pick things that are in the same column. All right. Uh, if we take a look at this next one, I've got 18 core electrons and one valence. So um, those are going to add up to, so the core plus the valence add up to your total number of electrons. So that means we have 19 electrons total. So if we look at what element has 19 electrons, that is K. So that is, the symbol is K, the name is potassium. And uh, um, it is also in the fourth row. I picked a lot of things in the fourth row. Whoops, okay. <laughs> and if I pick something with similar chemistry, I'm again pick something in the same column. So maybe like sodium or rubidium. Um, and notice that things that are in the, um, let's see, same column have the same number of valence electrons. So like everything over here in column one has one valence electron and they're all alkali metals. They all react strongly with water. Um, so it turns out that the number of valence electrons really has a big impact on how they behave. And that's why we tend to really focus on those outer electrons. And it makes sense that the valence electrons would be important because they're the ones that are on the very outside of the atom and they're the ones that are kind of interacting with the rest of the world there. Let's go over this fourth one because maybe it's kind of tricky. Um, we have a hint here that an element with similar chemistry would be chlorine. So chlorine is Cl. So we're looking for a substance that is in the same column as chlorine. Here's chlorine. But it has 28 core electrons. So notice how these two first two also had 28 core electrons. So I'm going to guess that it's also in row four. Again, I got another one here in row four. OK, so let's look at something that is in a row four that would have similar properties to chlorine. That would be something in the same column as chlorine. So that would be bromine. So bromine's in the same column as chlorine, so it has similar properties. It also has 28 core electrons. I'm just get, kind of guessing that for now. I'm saying, oh no, so these all had 28 core, so maybe bromine will as well. We can kind of double check our our work here. Um, okay, so let's say let's say that's bromine. Okay, so Br um, bromine. It has. Um, if we looked back at it, it had 35 
electrons total. So that would give it seven, it's got seven valence electrons and seven plus 28 is 35. This all seems to be working out well. So this one is bromine. So I'm gonna go over that one because that's tricky. Um, the, let's, so uh, let's look at one more. Okay, so we got 12 electrons. What element would I be if I have 12 electrons? That looks like magnesium. Okay, magnesium has an atomic number of um, 12. It is in um, column two. So it has two valence electrons. It is in row three. So it has three shells. Its core electrons is gonna be 12 minus two, it's gonna be 10. And if I'm looking for an element with similar chemistry, I'm gonna pick something in the same column. So again, like beryllium, or calcium could be good options. And uh, again, that element is Mg, it's magnesium. So the idea behind this is using those patterns to kind of fill in this table here. And this last one, so there's a couple questions here also you can answer eight and nine. What do these elements have in common? Think about your patterns with shells or valence electrons. And then we also wanna be able to draw a model. So. This one says draw a shell model, model for xenon. So xenon is right here. Um, it is right below krypton. So when you're drawing this model, what the things I want you to represent would be the correct number of shells. So it's gonna have five shells. And then you want to show how many electrons it has on its outermost shell. So it should have eight valence electrons. And the reason why I know this is because it's, we know it has five shells because it's in the fifth row. We know it has eight valence electrons because it's in the eighth column. And then we can also figure out how many um, electrons should be on the inside. And we can notice from page 12 and from the reading, you can see some patterns as to how those inner electrons are organized. I'm not as worried about that pattern because really it's the outer electrons that we're most concerned with, um, but we can, uh, let's see, we do know that xenon has 54 electrons total. So we can, we wanna represent that in our picture. So 54 total electrons. So what that means is you're gonna have eight electrons on the outer shell, and then you're gonna have, um, what is that? 46 um, core electrons um, on those first four shells the core shells or the inner ones. So that's what your model should look like. You should actually draw it and just kind of over, going over what should be in it. All right, so hopefully this helps. You can always send me a message if you have questions.